Now I want to show you how the span columns feature works, and this is a very cool thing that was added in InDesign CS5, and it suddenly made my life a whole lot easier when it came to putting together things like newsletters and magazines. Before I show you that, I'm going to change the body copy style slightly because this doesn't look quite how I want it to look. These subsequent paragraphs, I'd like them to be slightly indented, but I don't want the first paragraph indented, and I want to put a little space between them. I'm going to add the space first, so I'm going to double click on body copy, and then go to indents and spacing, and increase the space after a little bit, that looks fine. Now at the moment, the same style is applied to all three paragraphs. In order to produce an indent for subsequent paragraphs, I need to create a duplicate of the body copy style and add an indent to it. Now I could go to the options button here and choose duplicate style. And I could also drag that down onto the new icon at the foot and drop it. And that is a quick way of giving me a duplicate style. They're both pretty fast, but this is what I tend to use. Now I'm going to rename that. So if I double click on the name, then I don't have to open the style in order to name it. And I'm going to call that body copy indented. Now I'm going to apply this style to these two paragraphs. So the letter T gets me back into the type tool. I don't need to highlight the whole thing. Click on body copy indented. And of course, nothing changes because right now it's exactly the same as the body copy style. Now I'm going to double click on that to open it up. And let's go to indents and spacing again. And we'll give it a first line indent of, well, let's see. Maybe a bit more. How about three of those? That looks fine. Okay, now I've got the appearance that I want. Now, how about if I wanted to split this frame into two columns? Let's try that, and I'll show you how to do it. You have to have the frame selected first, so I've clicked on it with the selection tool. Then you go to the object menu, and down to this really useful window, text frame options. And in this window, I can choose how many columns I want to turn the frame into. So, how about two? There's the gutter width that I can edit if I want, set to four decimal places of an inch. And there's the remaining space divided into two, giving me the column width. And as you can see, the heading is sitting on one side of the column. It can't run across the two. Nevertheless, I'm going to OK that. So that's something that I've applied to the frame. It's nothing to do with either the heading or the body copy style, or indeed the body copy indented style. Now I'm going to edit the heading style, but be warned, if I suddenly click on that, watch what happens. Everything gets formatted to heading. We'll undo that with Command Z, that's Control Z on a PC. I'm going to choose Command Shift A or Control Shift A, which deselects everything. But now I'm going to double click on heading, because now I've got to edit that. And I'm going to go down to Span Columns, and I'll pull this down so you can see what's going to happen. And it says right now that the paragraph layout option is for a single column. So if I click on that and choose span columns, look what happens straight away. And I can choose how many columns to span. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as all. And I can also add, if I wish, additional space before or after the span. Now, I already added that as part of a paragraph style, so I'm not going to bother to do that here. And that's how span columns work for a heading that you want to pull across the various columns within a single frame. Now we'll look at split columns.